Hey everyone, um, we're going to start lesson three from your Adobe Photoshop classroom in a book. This lesson says it will take about an hour to complete, but a lot of this is going to be review again, just like yesterday, so it shouldn't take you guys quite so long. Um, we're going to work on this shadow box. We will start with this document, which has the different shapes down here, and we're going to move them to their appropriate location on the shadow box. And what we should end up with is going to look like this, which is pretty cool. So in your files, <clears throat> you're going to go, you should download these files to your computer from Google Classroom. Uh, whenever you go to Bridge, this is Adobe Bridge, remember we looked about it yesterday, you're going to go to this PC and you should see your name here somewhere on the U drive. Uh, I strongly suggest that you create a folder for Photoshop because we're going to be doing lessons for a different program later and I don't want you to get them mixed up. I have graphic design and then Photoshop, but I teach a lot of classes. So I'm going to say Photoshop. My classroom and a book is here. Lesson 3 is what we're working on and the Lesson 3 start file I already have open. So the first thing we're going to do is save this because remember we don't want to save over our original. So we're going to save as you're going to put your last name here in the beginning, and we're going to save it as last name 03 working or something to that effect. I'm not going to be freaking out if it's not exactly that. And now we're ready to work. <clears throat> so the first tool we're looking at is our quick select tool. So if you're on page 55 and 56, this is where we start this step. Um, you're going to grab your quick select tool which is this one right here. It's one, two, three, four down from the top on your tools menu. And you may see the magic one. If you do, right click it and you get your quick select. And we're going to make sure that auto enhance is checked. Now I'm going to uncheck it just to show you the difference. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. Remember you can zoom in with control plus and minus or your zoom tool. I like the keyboard shortcuts and I think you will too once you use them a little more. So I'm going to leave Auto Enhance unselected or unchecked, and I'm going to click here to select this. Now, it selected all of it at once because these colors don't vary much. All right, but what I want you to see is how this didn't really select the actual edge like I wanted it to. It's kind of off right here, okay? And that's where Auto Enhance comes in. Auto Enhance actually takes a, maybe a few seconds longer to process sometimes, but it's so worth it because you get a way better... Uh, selection out of the deal. So I'm going to deselect, auto enhance, I'm going to do it again. And this time, if you look here, it's really, really accurate, much more accurate than it was before. And it really, you know, on that small of a selection didn't take much more time. So we're, we're cool with that. That's a good investment of time. All right, so I've had this selected. I'm going to move it. So I'm going to move to my move tool. Click it and drag it to A because, of course, we're going in order of the book. So A comes first in the alphabet. It just makes sense. We can kind of see the shape that that's what it's supposed to be. <clears throat> I'm going to put this here over the shadow. And once I have it in place, I'm going to deselect. Now, there's a couple ways to do that, of course. We talked about yesterday. You can go to the select menu and deselect. Or you can press Control D on your keyboard, which is what I prefer to do. So there's the first step. Super easy. Um, the next selection tool we're using begins on page, sorry, had a little moment, 57 and then 58. This time we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool. Okay, and basically what this does is make a selection that is round because anything that's elliptical is, is rounded, doesn't have corners. Um, so we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool and we're going to try to get this plate right here. Okay, now the way this works is you can click and drag in any direction you want and it's going to make some type of a rounded object, right? So I'm going to I have my elliptical marquee. Now if you can't see that, you might have to right click. It might be on rectangular. Right click it and choose elliptical. I'm going to put my pointer over the plate. <clears throat> I'm going to drag diagonally across the oval plate to create the selection. But I'm not going to let go of my mouse button. It's okay if the first time you do this, it doesn't exactly match the plate. That's fine, and we're going we're gonna to deal with that. So I'm going to just click right here and just drag to kind of make this circle. Now, as you can see, I kind of missed some stuff, but that's not the end of the world. 
So let's say, you know, I want to fix this without having to start my selection over again while I'm still holding down the mouse button because I haven't let go yet. I'm going to press the space bar. And whenever I do that, I can move this circular shape around. So I'm going to move it like right here. And I let go, and then I can drag my, my selection tool over. Okay, and it's still not quite right. So I'm going to hit my space bar again. Still haven't let go of my pointer. Drag down a little bit to make that line up. Let go. Okay, and now I'm going to just drag my selection tool up some. So now pretty, it's not like flawless, I'm sure, if I zoomed in on it more. But it's pretty close, and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to let go. I have the selection now. <clears throat> This time, though, instead of us using our move tool to move this, we're going to do it another way. So I need to zoom out. Now, obviously, the second step, we're going to do B. And <clears throat> in order for me to move this selection this time, I'm going to control and click this. And as soon as I press the control key on my keyboard, you can see the difference. As soon as I press that, it gets a little pair of scissors. And those pair of scissors pretty much always mean cut. That's what that always represents. So by holding this down and me clicking and dragging this, I'm cutting it away from where it was, and I'm putting it right here. And when I get it in place, I can let go. Now, it's still selected, okay? So I can still kind of manipulate that a little bit and move it around. Really, really simple. And then, of course, once I get it in place, <clears throat> I can Control D to deselect or use select menu and deselect. I'm going to control D. All right, so the next shape is a little funky. It is this thing right here. We're going to select this, but first we're going to use we're going to use two separate tools to make this one happen. The first thing we're going to do is select it with our rectangular marquee tool. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to outline it. Now you want to make sure that the entire shape is inside that line. If you start here and you cut some of it off, it's not going to work right. So we're going to make sure our entire shape is there. It's okay if it's a little bit too big. Okay. And at that point, we're going to select the magic wand tool, which is hidden behind quick select. I'm going to right click quick select. I have my magic wand now. In the options bar, you want to make sure that the tolerance is set at 32, and that is a value that determines the range of colors that the one will select. And you want to click to subtract from selection. So this is currently all selected, everything in this rectangle. But we want to subtract all this extra white space from the selection, leaving only this shape. So if you look here, this first one says new selection, add to selection, subtract from selection, and then intersect with selection. But we're going to choose subtract from. So with that, with that done, I can click on this white. And if you look on my magic wand tool, there's a little negative sign there, a minus sign. Uh, whenever I click on that, click on anywhere on this white section with that subtraction sign, it's going to subtract the white part from my selection. It's going to be super awesome. Just wait for it. Are you ready? Bam. That's pretty cool. And it's really, really close. It's really tight. Anytime you have a solid white background and there's plenty of contrast between whatever it is you're trying to select and the white, it works really, really well. All right, so now that I have that selected, I'm going to zoom back out just like I've done already in the past. I'm going to grab my move tool. I click that baby and I'm going to drag it up here and put it on its shadow. Now, I'm not trying to do mine flawlessly, but I do want you to make sure that you have yours as close as possible. I'm just trying to show you the tools. It's there. I'm going to deselect. You know how to do that now. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is this little shell right here. In your book, in your text, it tells you to use the lasso tool and then in combination with that to use another tool. And honestly, that is not the most efficient way to do this. I don't think it's helpful. And I would prefer to use something different. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the next tool in your um, in your lesson, <clears throat> and then you can just use it twice. <coughs> Sorry, I'm having a moment here. All right, so the next tool, we're going to just skip right on over. Well, we're going to skip that part, and then we're going to come back to what's on page 64. If you would prefer to use the quick select tool on this, you can. Okay, 
That does a pretty good job. <clears throat> Always does. I love that tool. It's one of my favorites. You can do that. You can use the magnetic lasso, though, which we haven't learned yet. I'm going to show you. So the magnetic lasso is on this third one. It would probably say lasso tool. We're not using it. <clears throat> if you check magnetic lasso, make sure that you're zoomed in pretty close on this. If you're curious how I made those panels disappear, if you press the tab key on your keyboard, it makes all that go away. And when you press it again, it comes back. It's wonderful. Okay. So I have my tool selected. I'm going to make all that go away. And what you're going to do with this magnetic lasso, when it says it's magnetic, it means it sticks to magnets, stick to stuff. Um, so whenever I kind of click and outline this, just drive around this with my mouse, it selects this. It sticks to the edge. It recognizes the color difference, and it kind of magnetizes to it, so to speak. I'm going to do it carefully and slowly, but look, <clears throat> I kind of goofed right here. So let's say if this, when this happens and it kind of goes out of place, if you press the backspace key, it's going to delete the last anchor point, and you can backspace as much as you need to. So if I do it again, I come here and there and you know all over the place or whatever, I can hit backspace as many times as I need to to get it back to where I want it. If it doesn't automatically drop a pin wherever you think it should, you can click to drop your own pin for like some you know fine shapes and corners and things like that. Whenever you get back to the first point, you see a little symbol pops up on my pointer. I'm just going to click, and that closes that selection. And I'm going to go back to my move tool and press tab to make all that stuff come back. I'm going to come back to my move tool, and I'm going to drag this up to where it goes. Now we have a slight problem. Because this is not, that's not going to fit like that. We have an issue. So there's a couple ways that you can adjust that. Now, <clears throat> one way that you can do it is to go to um, Select and Transform Selection. And you see these bars popped up around the edges. And you can click and you can drag this until you get it the right, the, uh, face the right direction. Actually, I screwed up on that. Sorry. Excuse me, edit, transform. I used the wrong transform one. Edit, transform, and then I'm going to say rotate. And you can rotate a specific number of degrees, you know, that's that's kind of off or odd. Or you can just say rotate 90 degrees. Okay, and then I can put that into place. All right, if I did not want to do it that way, if I didn't want to go through a menu, which I typically don't because I am like to be different, I guess, um, I can also, with this move tool selected, I can move my cursor out here on this corner, and you see it kind of gets to be a round shape, or like a kind of a curved little set of arrows. I can click and I can drag this the way I want it. Now, it's harder to get to an even 90 degrees, which it actually worked out perfect that time, but once you, once you click that, you can come right here, and this is the angle of whatever you're trying to turn, that's how much you want to rotate it. I'm going to say 90 degrees. And I'm just going to click and just drop this into place. Okay, And then deselect to make all that go away. Press the enter key to lock it into place. Deselect. And there it goes. <clears throat> really, really easy. Lots of options on how to do that. Your next tool that you're supposed to learn is the magnetic lasso, which I just showed you. So I'm going to, now this is really great because this has a real odd background. Um, your quick select tool might work well, actually work better than I thought it would. Um, and I can, you know, get rid of this extra selection and stuff here by pressing down the alt key, but it's just not, uh, you know, it's all right. It's pretty good. It's not perfect. It's all right. But um, you're supposed to use this one with your magic lasso tool again. So, or actually for the first time. So I'm going to let you guys do it this way. I, again, you know, if you, I'm not taking my time like I expect you to because <laughs> I have high expectations for you guys. Um, but I, usually the quick select tool with that auto enhance is really, really, really good unless you have something that is just multicolored with some low contrast or something. 
<clears throat> so I've got that selected. It's not perfect, like I said. I'm going to grab my move tool, move it up here to where it goes. And the very last thing we're going to do <clears throat> is work on the screw head. Now this is going to be cool. I'm going to show you some new stuff here. We haven't done anything with this before. We're going to go back to our elliptical marquee tool, but we're going to use it slightly different. We're going to bring that back up, right click on the rectangle. I'm going to put my cursor right in the middle of this circle, and I'm going to click and I'm going to kind of drag outward, okay? And while I'm dragging, I'm going to hold down the Alt key on my keyboard. And the bigger, the farther I drag, the bigger a circle it is. So I'm going to hold down that key. Now I want it, I need to kind of move it. It's kind of like before, it's not really perfect. So I'm going to press the shift key on my keyboard to move my selection around a little bit. When I get it where I think I want it, I'll let go of shift and I'll go back to moving this. Not really perfect. Shift and move and shift and move and all that good stuff until you get it where you want it. And that right there looks pretty decent. So right now I'm going to let go of my pointer and my alt key. And I have this selected. So next thing we're going to do is move it with our move tool once again. Love that little thing. And I'm going to put it, we're, we're going to put a, a screw head on the corner of, of this right here, of this frame. So I'm going to click it and drag it up here, but it's just way too big. Okay, it's way too big. We don't want it to be that big. kind of looks a little funky. So I'm going to choose to edit, transform, and scale. Edit, transform, scale. And we want this to be about 40% of the size that it is. So right here, beside width and height, you can type 40. But you're going to do it in both of them. And then you press the enter key, and that kind of locks locks it in there at 40% of its original size. And you can move it down here on this corner. And, and yeah, that looks pretty decent. <clears throat> so we're going to press enter to commit to that change and remove the transformation boundary. Now I need to duplicate this. Now there's a couple ways I can do that. What we can do is we can move this, and while moving this, we can actually duplicate it. So um, back on those keyboard shortcuts that I like so much, while you're holding down the Alt key, you're on the Move tool. If you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, i zoom in this a little bit more. You can click on this. If I zoom in some, you can kind of see I have a white arrow and a black arrow kind of on top of each other. Well, if I alt, if I let go of alt, that goes away, click it again, or press it again, and I get the white one back. So whenever I click and move this, you see it moved it and it gave me a second copy of that screw. So I'm going to put this on this left side over here. So that way it matches. It's really hard to do whenever you're not zoomed in because you can't it's hard to click in the right spot but we're gonna move it over here now if you notice that little pink line that's showing me how that's this kind of a guide to let me know that that's where the other one is the top of the other one is on the other side so it's gonna let me line it up like that which is really really helpful uh, so I move that and press enter to commit to that change <clears throat> now this one this next one's gonna blow your mind this is great stuff um, this time, we're going to move this one up, but not only am I going to press down the Alt key, I'm going to also press down the Shift key on my keyboard. So I'm going to Alt, Shift, and click this, and I'm going to drag it. Now what I want you to see about this is it makes me make sure that it's lined up. I can move my keyboard, my mouse over here, and I can't move it that direction, or this, well actually it, it did move off of the um, thing, I think that was just a glitch. But uh, I can only move it in line with this, okay, in line with the original one. So when I get it up to where I want it, I'm going to let go of my mouse pointer and my keys, press enter to lock it in place, and there we go. Now I have one more to do, and this one should be the same way. I'm going to Alt and Shift, and I'm going to move it this way. All right, there we go. I got it now. Okay, put this on this corner right here, 
and press enter to key lock that in and and now you can see that we have all of our little corners with screws on them they look really nice press Control d to deselect looks nice but i have this kind of garbage down here i need to get rid of so we're going to go back to using our crop tool for that you need to save if you haven't saved recently i haven't told you to um, Control s to save and now we're going to crop so we want to get rid of all this extra stuff so we know where our crop tool is we learned that yesterday um, if you look here, and this is probably going to be the same case on yours, your width by height and resolution is the same. It's still kind of set to 7x7 seven seven from Lesson 2. So I want to clear that. I'm going to click this clear button, and that's going to make all that go away. So now we can transform it however we want to. It doesn't have to be in a certain proportion. And I'm just going to kind of get this where there's not much white around there. I don't mind a little, but we just don't want much. Okay. Okay. Once I get it where I want it, press enter on my keyboard, and there we go. That is my finished product. Yours should look something similar, even better probably than mine. Um, but that's pretty much all you're going to have to do for this lesson. There is no um, bonus on this one. I'm sorry. No bonus on this one. So we're just going to finish that, and then we're going to move into lesson four, which will also take about an hour to complete but it's about layers and we've already talked a little bit about that stuff too so this is what your finished product should look like if you have issues of course ask three before me but I'm always happy to help